1804, Class 1 or Original Draped Bust Silver Dollar is widely known as the King of American Coins, and with good reason, for there are few coins in the American catalogue that have so much been talked about, speculated over, and extensively researched as this iconic coin. But why has its myth not only persisted, but grown over the centuries? Why does this particular coin so fascinate us and why has it become one of the most valuable coins in the world, easily selling for millions of dollars upon those rare occasions that one does become available? Well, there are many ways to tell this story, but to try and keep things as simple and concise as possible. I'll start in 1832, when New Hampshire native Edmund Roberts became the nation's first special envoy, or an ambassador of sorts, to the Far East by appointment of President Andrew Jackson. Roberts wasted little time in his new position and soon reached what would be the modern equivalent of a free trade agreement with the Kingdom of Siam in 1833, and a similar agreement would be concluded with the Sultan of Muscat in the following year. Upon his return to the United States, he bemoaned the fact that he had little by the way of diplomatic gifts to present to his counterparts, and expressed concerns that what little he had may even be seen as insulting to his royal hosts. In a letter to the State Department dated October 8, 1834, he wrote, I am rather at a loss to know what articles might be most acceptable to the Sultan, but I suppose a complete set of new gold, silver, and copper coins of the United States, neatly arranged in a Morocco case, and then to have an outward covering would be most proper to send not only to the Sultan, but to other Asiatics. Clearly, his concerns were taken seriously as President Andrew Jackson himself ordered such sets to be produced. In a letter written on November the 11th, 1834, Secretary of State John Forsyth writes the following. The President has directed that a complete set of coins of the United States to be sent to the King of Siam and another to the Sultan of Muscat. You are requested, therefore, to forward to the Department for that purpose duplicate specimens of each kind now in use, whether gold, silver, or copper. This order was later amended to include additional sets for the rulers of Cochin China and Japan as well for a total of four presentation sets. Okay, now all of this is good and well, but I hear you asking, what does any of this have to do with the 1804 dollar? Well, we'll be getting to that next. You see, there was a disagreement as to how Secretary Forsyth's order should be interpreted. Mint Director Samuel Moore and Chief Coiner Adam Eckfeld, remember that name for a little later on in the story, both agreed that this should include two coins which were not actually being minted at the time, but which were authorized by Congress, namely the silver dollar and the gold eagle coins. A moratorium on the production of silver dollars imposed nearly three decades earlier by the then Secretary of State, James Madison, was lifted in 1831, but mint records reflected that no such coins were actually struck since 1804, when 19,000 570 coins were delivered. What those records, however, did not reflect was the common mint practice at the time to keep using older dyes until they were worn out, and that the nearly 20,000 coins struck in January of 1804 were all dated 1803 instead. Thusly, no 1804 silver dollars actually existed. The deep irony of the situation is that the main reason why Chief Coiner Adam Eckfeld argued for the use of the last minted date for legal tender, which he believed to be 1804, and not the actual date of mintage, which was 1834, was to avoid exciting the numismatic community by creating an ultra-rarity, which is, of course, 
exactly what he ended up doing anyway. So that is how the special proof dollars minted in 1834 came to bore the date of 1804 instead. Now there is no record of exactly how many of these 1804 dollars were minted, but today 8 coins are known to exist and based on what we know it is very likely, even probable, that the original mintage figure matches the surviving number of examples today. 4 coins were of course included with the presentation sets that accompanied Mr. Edmund Roberts back to the Orient, as it was known in those days, where 2 sets were in fact presented to the Imam of Muscat and the King of Siam as planned to finalize the respective trade agreements. However, the two remaining sets intended for the emperors of Cochin China and Japan were never delivered to their intended recipients. Mr. Roberts contracted dysentery while on his journey and died in Macau on June the 12th, 1836, before reaching his destination. The sets were then returned to the care of the State Department aboard the USS Peacock in the same year. What precisely happened to the two sets after that point is a matter of pure speculation, as all evidence of them ends there. Meanwhile, the small community of coin collectors in the US were blissfully unaware that the 1804 dollar even existed. That is, until 1842 when the son of the former chief coiner Adam Eckfeld, remember him, Jacob Eckfeld and William Dubois published a manual of gold and silver coins of all nations. In this book they used a pantographed illustration of one of the 1804 dollars in the Mint Cabinet's collection to illustrate the draped bust dollar coin. Astute collectors such as Matthew A. Stigney quickly took notice and in 1843 he made a trip to Philadelphia and traded a rare gold immune Columbia coin for one of the 1804 dollar coins. From there the coin's legend only grew and by the late 1850s there was a healthy reward waiting for anyone who could locate such a coin for sale. Naturally this drew the attention of the mint's more opportunistic employees. By 1858 a number of reproductions were struck by these midnight minters, as they were politely referred to, even though the same obverse die was used, a different reverse was employed and these coins also lacked edge lettering as well, making them very easy to distinguish from the genuine article. This actually led to a minor scandal and a congressional inquiry at the Mint, which saw Mint director James Snowden hunting down and recovering these coins. These are today known as the Class 2 examples and only a single coin remains extant, currently curated at the Smithsonian Institute, it was apparently overstruck on an 1857 Swiss shooting taller, similar to the ones shown here. From there, things remained quiet for a number of years until again, around 1869 to 1876, a number of restrikes appeared on the market, most notably from Philadelphia coin dealer John W. Hazeltine, again struck with the second reverse die, but this time edge lettering was added, albeit rather inconsistently so. Today, these coins are known as the Class 3 1804 dollars and a total of 6 coins are known, bringing the total roster of 1804 dollars of any class to 15 coins total. Now some of these Class 3 dollars were given fantastical backstories to make them seem more legitimate, like the Ellsworth example which first showed up in 1893 was said to be the property of a freed slave and his son, or the Berg specimen which was actually sent to Vienna to make it seem more authentic. Now from there we jump ahead nearly 70 years to 1962. Eric P. Newman and Ken Bresset had just completed their academic study of the 
$1804 just in time for the 1962 ANA convention when British numismatist David B. Spink shocked the numismatic world by announcing that he had in his possession the original King of Siam presentation set, which included, of course, the original $1804. In a letter to Dr. Sarah Freeman, Eric P. Newman writes the following. You may by now realize the shock I received when the new $1804 turned up. The book I wrote was just about to be released and after being missing for 128 years, the coin in question makes its dramatic entrance. I spent last weekend rewriting all phases of the book which needed it on account of the new information. The set was still in its original presentation box and according to the story promulgated by Spink himself, although the complete veracity of that story has been challenged more recently, is that he bought the set from two elderly English ladies who were the descendants of Anna Leonowens, the famed English governess upon whose life story and memoirs the fictionalized novel Anna and the King of Siam was based, a story which then inspired Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical The King and I. She was later portrayed in the big screen by Irene Dune in 1946, by Deborah Kerr alongside Yul Brenner in 1956, and finally by Jodie Foster in 1999. Now, in terms of actual value, the Sultan of Muscat specimen managed to set the record in 1999 when it sold for $4,140,000. More recently though, in 2013, the Mickley Horn Queller specimen managed to sell for $3,877,500. There is of course much, much more to be said about the $1804, but I think that this will have to suffice for now. However, for those interested in a bit of further reading, I can highly recommend the fantastic $1804 by Eric P. Newman and Ken Bressett, or even the slightly more difficult to obtain the rare silver dollars dated 1804 and the exciting adventures of Edmund Roberts, as authored by Q. David Bowers, as excellent resources. I'll include a link in the description should you want to take a closer look at those. It was in 1885 when an original $1804 became the first coin to sell for more than $1,000 when Henry Chapman first coined the moniker the King of United States Coins, a nickname that has persisted to this very day. This has been a World Numismatic News special presentation taking a quick look at the $1804 and its origins. If you'd like to see more content like this, then please let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to WNN and activate notifications with the bell icon not to miss any future videos. For the world numismatic news, I am Numisman saying thank you for watching, and remember, keep collecting and have a great day.